My name is Jan Plass and I'm on the faculty of the Steinhardt School of Culture, Education and Human Development. I specialize in educational communication and technology. I'm the director of the CREATE Consortium for Research and Evaluation of Advanced Technologies in Education and I'm also the co-director of the NYU Institute for Games for Learning. The common theme in my research is the design of effective technology interventions for learning. When I say technology interventions, I mean games, simulations, micro-worlds, an uh, animations, web pages, uh, anything that uses computers to present the information, and especially using visuals to present the information. And I believe it's so important to do research on this issue because many of the environments that we have currently available are not all that effective. And it takes an understanding both of human cognition and of social and cultural issues to improve them in their design. We do that under the umbrella of the CREATE Consortium, in which we have a number of projects that look at this issue from various angles. We have projects in medical education where we improve surgery education for student in their clerkship rotations together with uh, the School of Medicine. We do a project currently um, that is uh, looking at chemistry simulations for high school education that's funded by the U.S. Department of Education. And our latest uh, initiative is the Games for Learning Institute funded by Microsoft Research that looks at the educational value of games. The NYU Games for Learning Institute is a collaboration with the Courant Institute of Mathematics and Ken Pearl and the computer scientist there and several other universities in the greater New York area. We are in the first project in the Institute aiming to question practically everything we know about learning from games. So we're going back to observing kids playing commercial off-the-shelf games like Halo or like any other uh, game that a middle schooler might play and we ask what makes those games, those commercial games, those entertaining games so effective and so engaging because kids spend a lot of time playing games and they spend much less time working with the environments that we built for them. So what can we learn from those games uh, that we can apply to educational environments? Once we have isolated design factors that make games so effective and engaging, we will build mini-games, we will build prototypes for games that we use to empirically test that, to put into under scientific rigorous investigation of whether those design factors actually predict learning in games. And once we have identified that, we build games that we then can use in middle schools for science, technology, engineering and math curricula. So what we will do is we will go into middle schools and we will have um, kids um, in after school programs or in museum settings uh, play games and we observe their gameplay and we want to understand exactly what in a particular game is so engaging. Is it the kind of scores they get? Is it the kind of challenges they're presented with? Is it the scaffolding that allows them to learn uh, what they need to do in a particular game? Um, is it the interaction with other players? We have a lot of those, uh, in that information already uh, in anecdotal uh, form, but we need to put that on a rigorous scientific foundation. Once we have identified those factors, we build mini games that incorporate them into topics that are relevant for middle school curricula and science particular, in particular. And, uh, and then we will make a library of games available to middle schools to integrate into their curricula and we work with teachers to build curricular materials too. What will be exciting of this research is that it combines a variety of methodologies that haven't really been brought together. We will do observations and, and video analysis, we will do analyses of log files of user behavior that is being recorded, we will interview kids and do focus groups, but we will also use methods such as eye tracking uh, to see where kids are actually looking and, and what uh, uh, elements on the screen they are paying attention to. The initial three years of the Games for Learning Institute will focus on three major outcomes. We will provide design guidelines for developers of educational games that are theoretically based and empirically validated. We will provide an architecture for the development of new games that is instrumented, in other words, that allows for research and the collection of data for anybody else who's interested in this work. And we'll actually have mini games that can be used in middle school science curricula. In the Molecules and Minds project, which is funded by the U.S. Department of Education, we have looked at high school chemistry curricula and have built chemistry simulations that can be integrated into the curriculum. We've spent two years just looking at what design factors have to be taken into consideration when designing those simulations to make them especially effective for learners that are typically underperforming and have not had the prior experience and, and the benefit of, of good educational materials. And then in the third and fourth year, we're looking at how the integration of those simulations into the chemistry curriculum actually impacts learning. A similar project that we just started in collaboration with the NYU School of Medicine focuses on the design of materials for their surgery education program. 
In the third year of the surgery education program, students go into clerkship rotations and as part of that see a variety of surgery procedures. The modules that we're investigating have been designed to support their learning of those surgery procedures and we're looking again at design factors that make them more effective. Those design factors include the interaction that learners have when they engage with the material, social networking features of how learners can actually collaborate and cooperate and communicate when they learn from those materials, and emotional design factors, another interest of mine, um, how can we actually affect learners' emotions during the learning process and, and therefore enhance learning. What is most exciting about all of this research is that uh, we're doing this in collaboration with the master's and doctoral students in the ECT program. And uh, in the master's program, we have a focus on more skills building in developing those environments. And on the doctoral level, we have a focus on uh, empirical research and theoretical work in understanding learning with those environments. And uh, together with these students, uh, we are working on these and many other very exciting projects.